שלום. How is tonight? I trust that you are doing fine. Okay. And I am sure that you already knew that the community quarantine is already lifted in our region. And in region uh, 10, if I'm not mistaken, and also the BARMM. We praise God for that. But we still have to observe the minimum health requirement. Wash your hands, uh, wearing face mask outside the house, and observe uh, physical distancing. Before we go for our uh, talk, uh, let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us the privilege of enjoying this day. Thank you for the comfort and safety you have afforded to our families. Thank you also for supplying our needs for today. We praise you for once again giving us this opportunity to offer you our prayers tonight. Thank you, Lord, that uh, our region uh, has already been free from the community quarantine and Lord would like to pray that you continue to uh, make our city COVID free. Lord I pray for those who are in, uh, in authority who are in responsible in uh, the health situation of this city. We pray that you continue to give them wisdom as how to continue to protect the city from this uh, pandemic. Lord challenge and encourage us through the talk that we will be sharing tonight. We pray, Holy Spirit, to guide us and give us the wisdom to understand and to apply what we will be learning tonight. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, our talk tonight is uh, titled, Prayer Changed Lives. What is in a prayer? Have you ever feel uh, that there is something strange about prayer? Do you pray and then you doubt afterwards? Do you doubt but still you go ahead praying? Do you wait whether your prayer is accepted, rejected, or in a pending situation? But you still pray. Prayer also confronts us with another strange thing, that is faith. These two, prayer and faith, I believe, embrace each other. One is a must for the other. These two goes together alongside each other. It's just like the railway. And tonight, as we are going to pray after this talk, we are going to consider some things. What are the things you are going to pray tonight? Why do you pray for those things? If you're going to say a prayer, it's probably because you want something to happen. You pray for a blessing, because you want to feel blessed afterwards. You pray for protection and guidance because you want to feel safe and guided afterwards. Or when you want your problems to go away as soon as possible, you pray for deliverance. But if nothing happened, or it doesn't happen like you think it should, you might have the tendency to conclude that praying doesn't really work. But brothers and sisters, the Bible is filled with the stories of answered prayers. People pray to God to intercede in their problematic lives, which of course, God answered. You are going to look or read some of or few incredible stories of answered prayers. 
Notice two important aspects. First, the attitude and motives of the person who prayed. The power, or the second one, the power with which God answered. These stories could change the way you pray and change how your prayers get answered. Let us ponder on these stories. What was the need and how God answered those prayers? These are points or stories for us to ponder upon. Let's look into the first example. Hannah. Hannah is infertile, and she prays desperately for a son. Hannah was the unfortunate, barren, second wife. She is always being ridiculed and humiliated by the wife who easily bore children. In this situation she faced every day, Hannah pleaded with God for a son, promising to give him back to the Lord. She says, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. This can be found in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. And you know what? What was his result? God gave her a son. And he she named her, she named him Samuel. Samuel became the greatest prophet in Israel's history, who maintained direct communication with God throughout his life. And then there's a bonus also. In addition to Samuel, God gave Hannah three more sons and two daughters. Now, what can you learn from the story of Hannah? Here it is. When we are willing to give our best to God, He blesses us with more. We'll repeat that. When we are willing to give our best to God, He blesses us with more. Second example. Peter is in prison for preaching the gospel. The church prayed for his release. Christian faith by that time began to take root. The religious Hebrew governor, King Herod Agrippa, arrested Peter and put him in prison. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Acts, 5, uh, Acts 12 verse 5. One night, an angel appeared in Peter's jail cell and led him out of the prison through doors and past few groups of guards unnoticed, and even the prison gate just opened by itself for them to pass through. Then Peter arrived at Mary's house, where the church was gathered and praying. The servant girl was so surprised. Her name was uh, Rhoda. She was so shocked that she did not open the door to let Peter in, but rushed back into the house and told the group that Peter was outside. You know, sometimes God answers our prayers so quickly. It surprises us. I repeat, sometimes God answers our prayers so quickly. It surprises us. The third guy, Jairus. Jairus asked Jesus to heal his daughter so she won't die. Jairus, a synagogue ruler, risked his position in his faith community by making a request of the new religious teacher, that is Jesus, right in front of everyone. He told Jesus, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Mark 5, 23. Jesus tested Jesus' 
faith. Instead of going directly to his house, he stopped along the way to heal a sick woman. So before Jesus got to Jairus' house, the little girl had already died. But Jesus was planning more than a healing. He told Jairus to believe. Jesus entered the house and raised the girl back to life. So what can we learn from here? Jesus wants to exceed our heart's desires. He wants to resurrect our faith. Repeat again. Jesus wants to exceed our heart's desire. desires. He wants to resurrect our faith. Fourth example. Jesus prays for God's will before his arrest and crucifixion. The night of Jesus' betrayal, Jesus prayed alone in a garden, asking for God to protect his followers. Jesus agonized in prayer to God, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. Now, here it is. May we learn to ask for God's mercy, even while we commit to obey His will. May we learn to ask for God's mercy, even while we commit to obey His will. The fifth example is Daniel. To save his life and his friends' lives, Daniel prays for God to reveal a dream and its interpretation. When Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar had a confusing dream, he ordered his counselors to describe the dream and tell him what it meant, or they would all die. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Daniel chapter 2, verses 17 to 18. Not only were Daniel and his friends saved, but they were also elevated to positions of high authority in this pagan country. Daniel would become a spiritual influence to three powerful kings. What can you learn from this? You have no idea where God will place you. If you are willing to identify yourself as a praying believer who expects God to answer. You have no idea where God will place you if you are willing to identify yourself as a praying believer who expects God to answer. Now we'll go to the sixth example. Elisha. When Elisha and his servants and his servant are surrounded by the enemy, Elisha prays for God to reveal his power. Elisha's prophetic abilities were thwarting the plans of an enemy king, so the king sent a battalion to surround the city where Elisha was to launch an attack. As Elisha's servant panicked, Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he may see. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16. So God gave the servant the ability to see a vast army of heavenly hosts in fiery chariots and circling the enemy. Then Elisha prayed for God to blind the enemy army, which he did. Next, Elisha led them away from the city. If we could see God's protective celestial armies encircling us every day, we might have the faith to do whatever He asks of us. I repeat, if we could see God's protective celestial army encircling us every day, we might have the faith to do whatever He asks of us. Now we go to 
the seventh example. Hezekiah prays because God tells him that he is about to die. When King Hezekiah became gravely ill, the prophet Isaiah came to him with a message from God that he would die. Hezekiah prayed and cried to God, Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 3 Before Isaiah had left the palace, God instructed him to return with a new message. This is what uh, the message is. I have heard your prayers and seen your tears. I will heal you. I will add 15 years to your life. God responds to us when we remain in relationship with him. He may even change his mind. God responds to us even when we remain when we remain in relationship with him. He may even change his mind. Next example, also the same with uh, Hezekiah, same person. Jerusalem is under siege, so Hezekiah prays to save his people. The powerful Assyrian king Sennacherib had laid siege to Jerusalem. King Hezekiah, who told his people to keep their faith in God, prayed for delivery from their enemy. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord. Now, O Lord, our God, deliver us from his hand, so that all kingdoms on earth may know that you are alone, O Lord, our God. 1 Kings 19 verse 20 That night, the angel of the Lord killed 85,000 Assyrian soldiers, which compelled the rest of the army to return home without a fight. This is far more lethal than COVID-19. Just in one night, 85,000 people died. Whenever God's people follow His plan, He wages war on their behalf. Whenever God, God's people follow His plan, He wages war on their behalf. Sample 9. Moses. Moses asked God, to see him. Moses called the friend of God, James 2, verse 23, talk to God regularly. In a beautiful conversation, Moses asked for God's blessing on the Israelites and for God's presence to go with them as they travel. Then Moses asked to see God's glory, God's very personage, up close. Now show me your glory. Exodus 33, verse 18. God responded by tucking Moses into a little cleft on Mount Sinai and covering his view until God stood before him. Then God removed his hand and allowed Moses to view his form from the back. What was the result of this encounter? Moses so greatly as resembled God's brilliance that he had to wear a veil over his face so the Israelites could look at him. Now, there's a challenge here, or a lesson that we could learn. How much, how much of God's presence could we witness and represent to others if we worship like Moses? Hmm? How much of God's presence could we witness and represent to others if we worshipped like Moses? The tenth example, a thief on the cross asked Jesus to save him before he dies. While Jesus suffered on the cross to provide us salvation for our sins, two thieves hung next to him. While one of them ridiculed Jesus for allowing himself to be crucified, the second asked for forgiveness. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come, when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me 
in paradise. Luke chapter 23 verses 42 to 43. Jesus forgave the thief during his dying moments. And uh, here's the lesson that we could learn. It's never too late for a spiritual transformation. It's never too late for a spiritual transformation. Brothers, sisters in Christ, we serve a prayer answering God if we are in the center of His will. He will do great and mighty things through us. It is my prayer that the stories shared tonight will challenge us to be drawn more closer to God through prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the message that was shared tonight. We pray that you will continue to challenge us with the lives of people in the Bible who commit their lives in constant intimacy with you. We pray that our lives manifest the glory that is in you, that we cut from you as we dedicate our lives in communion with you. As we go to our next session, challenge us in our prayers that you will answer our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for we know you will bring out your glory in our lives as we commit ourselves to you in prayer. Give us the joy in praying and remind us always that you love to hear our prayers. We depend on your power, and above all, we surrender ourselves to your will. This we pray in your name. Amen. Please stay on for the prayer items to be flashed on your monitor right after this. Okay? Have a pleasant evening of prayer. God bless.